Hi everyone, uh, this week's video picks up on the recent uh, employment law webinar uh, presented by Sam Paulson in April and summarises uh, a number of changes which uh, are, have come into effect um, uh, and impact on employment law uh, and other related um, uh, areas of law. Uh, so the first um, area we'll pick up on is the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme. Uh, as you may be aware, this has been extended to September 2021. Um, those furloughed at the time of the extension can continue, but new employees placed uh, um, on furlough on or before 30th of April must have been employed on the 30th of October 2020. Um, now, from the 1st of May onwards, if we want to furlough an employee for the first time, they must have been employed on the 2nd of March 2021 or um, a, a real-time information submission made to HMRC between 20th of March 2020 and 20th of, uh, sorry, 2nd of March 2021. Um, the shielding guidance has now ended, uh, so as case numbers fall and uh, statistics generally improve, from the 1st of April the shielding guidance protecting clinically extremely vulnerable employees has now ended and if the work cannot be done from home they are now uh, encouraged to attend for work and will not be entitled to SSP or uh, employment support allowance on the basis of being advised to shield. Um, contributions to the furlough scheme will increase in summer 2021. Uh, so at present, um, employees are still uh, entitled to a minimum of 80% of their basic pay caps at £2,500. From July onwards, the employer will be required to contribute 10% of that pay. Uh, and in August and September, that contribution increases to 20%. Uh, I fully expect the scheme to be phased out at the end of September, um, although uh, we have been um, surprised that the scheme has been in place for so long before. Um, other statutory updates, the compensation award. Uh, this There is a cap um, uh, on unfair dismissal compensation, uh, which has been increased to £89,493, where the effective date of termination is on or after the 6th of April 2021. Um, when calculating a basic award or a week's pay for redundancy purposes, uh, the maximum week's pay is now increased to £544 for any dismissal on or after the 6th of April. Um, the exciting off-payroll uh, working rules, IR35, has come into force on the um, 6th of April. Uh, this was delayed uh, by 12 months because of the coronavirus pandemic and it is a, a very complex area of law which our regulatory uh, team have been assisting uh, a number of clients on. Uh, the new rules essentially make um, um, workers uh, subject to tax and national insurance contributions if they are providing their services through an intermediary and would otherwise be classed uh, as an employee. Post-employment notice pay, um, so this was a concept that was originally brought in a few years ago into settlement agreements which closed what could be described as a loophole on taxing um, notice pay. Um, new rules from the 6th of uh, April introduce an alternative calculation to post-employment um, notice pay. So if uh, an employee's pay period is defined in months, but their contractual notice period is not a whole number of months, a different calculation has to be applied to uh, um, ensure that the correct tax treatment is made on any of those payments. Gender pay gap reporting, so uh, this was delayed as well as a result of um, COVID-19. The deadline for submitting the gender pay, uh, pay gap report uh, for April, to, for, sorry, for years ending April 2020 has been extended to October 2021. Uh, and uh, new news in apprenticeships, firms will receive up to £3,000 uh, as an incentive payment to hire apprentices between 1st April and 30th September uh, 2021. Now, that was announced previously by the Chancellor as a, as a COVID support measure. Um, there are some increases in um, statutory rates of pay as well, maternity, paternity, shared parental leave and adoption pay um, increases uh, very slightly to, uh, from £151.20 to £151.97 a month, uh, sorry, a week. Uh, statutory sick pay increases from £95.85 to £96.35 per week and new minimum uh, wage rates and national living wage rates came into force in April 2021 uh, for workers aged 
23 and over, the highest uh, rate now applies, it was previously 25 and over, and that's £8.91 an hour. Workers aged 21 to 24, £8.20 per hour. The development rate for 18 to 20 year olds is 6 56 per hour. The young workers rate for those 16 to 17, 4 62 per hour. And the uh, apprentice rate increases from 4 15 to £4.30 um, per hour. Uh, if you do want to discuss any of those changes further or how they may impact on your business, particularly the uh, area of IR35, do get in touch, contact details on chadwicklawrence.co.uk or send uh, an email to employmenthub at chadlaw.co.uk. Thank you.